Alright, let's do a last minute Nintendo E3 prediction video. Because I was going to do one earlier, but then like a million leaks happened, so now I've got to completely redo it. Let's start with games that we know are going to be there. So, Smash Bros, which is literally their main game and their main showcase for this year's E3. I could see them doing it in either a similar way to 2013 or 2014. 2013, they saved the Smash reveal to the very end. And in 2014, they had a segment at the beginning discussing Smash, and then they ended it with another character reveal. Either way could work. I'm leaning towards ending it mainly, because that would be their, you know, big game to save it at the end. As far as the characters that they will reveal, I'm predicting three characters. Both in 2013, 2014, uh, and 2015, we got at least two characters. 2015 was just DLC, so that's a different thing but it would make the most sense for them to have at least three characters. I could see that being a sort of high-profile first-party character, a less profitable first-party character, and then a big third-party character to kind of wow people. While I'm sure they'll give us some details, I think most things will be just sort of vague understandings of what it is, tell us if it's a port or not, and then save the rest for a proper Smash Bros. Direct. Smash for Wii U got like three of them, so this certainly will probably as well. Next up, we have Fire Emblem and Yoshi. These were both confirmed for 2018, and I can't see them being delayed long enough that they don't show up here. Fire Emblem has become one of Nintendo's bigger franchises, so I imagine they'll want to push it quite a bit, and it'll probably be kind of one of their flagship titles here. Yoshi, on the other hand, might look a little different and will probably get its proper name. Same thing happened with Wooly World last year. These are these are completely guaranteed, there's no question about it. Additionally, there's Pokemon. Now, with the addition of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, I don't actually think they'll show up at the Direct itself. I do think they'll be demoed at the Treehouse Live event, but if they're shown at the Direct itself, I think it'll just be a little... don't forget about this type announcement. They've already shown the game off and given a decent amount of details, so I can't imagine they would then do another trailer right after revealing a trailer. It'd be a little too soon for that. I do think we'll still get plenty of information. They've announced that it'll be playable on the show floor, but we probably won't get too many new reveals. And Pokemon 2019 games are definitely not going to show up here. At all. The last game that's pretty much guaranteed to show up is Mario Tennis Aces. Now, this game is releasing just a few weeks after E3, so it's certainly not going to get much time spent on it. This has been a tradition with just about any game that releases really close to E3. I think that they'll have a similar thing to ARMS last year, where it's in like a scissor reel, or in the background of something, or just generally mentioned in passing. It'll definitely be on the show floor, probably be at the treehouse, and will be something that they talk about in their general E3, but not in the real conference itself. Next up, let's talk about some of the games that we know that exist, but we don't know if they would show up here. They're kind of the big juicy games that everybody's wondering about. We'll start with Metroid, because that's the big one that I think most people are excited about. We know pretty much nothing about the game, despite all the rumors flying around about it, but we do know that it'll probably be releasing at the very earliest in 2019. And Nintendo has said that their E3 conference this year is going to focus on 2018 games. Now, last year they said they would focus on 2017 games, and obviously we got a couple extras. Because usually when they say focus, that literally means it's, that's the focus, but there probably are some extras. So I wouldn't be terribly shocked to see this at this E3. Probably some sort of gameplay demo, or just a basic showing off trailer teaser thing. If we don't get anything, I wouldn't be surprised if there's an interview with Reggie talking about how the development has gone well, or a little update, but nothing major. I wouldn't be shocked if it was gone, but I'm sort of expecting it. Next up is Bayonetta 3. It's pretty much in the exact same situation as Metroid, in that we know pretty much nothing about it, but it was announced way later in the year, so that seems to imply that it would be less finished. So, I'm expecting it less than Prime 4. We'll have to see, though. 
Next up is Pikmin 4. Now, some of this might be my own personal bias, but I could definitely see this showing up at the C3. A long time ago, they talked about how Pikmin 4 was in development, and it's almost done, as they say, and then, th like, three years later, here we are. Now, they said a very similar statement about Pikmin 3 when it was almost done, roughly three years before that came out. So, maybe almost done is correct now? Maybe? I'm sure that the game started development as a Wii U game, and that's probably took time to port over to the Switch, and probably has been shifted to a lower development cycle, as they said before. But now could be the time, and it certainly would be a good new announcement. So, maybe? Of these games, I'd say Metroid has the highest chance, because that seems to be a real one that they would want to push. And even if it's not coming out this year, it would certainly be a good idea to continue to show it and promote it. Though I'd say all these games have a pretty decent shot of showing up, though I'm not expecting all of them. We can also talk about ports, because that's been a pretty big thing in the Switch's life cycle. Though I don't think they'll announce too many ports at this E3, primarily because they already have so much to show. But if they have a port coming out in these next couple months, there'd be no real reason not to show it off. I think our prime candidates here are Mario 3D World and Super Mario Maker. These both make perfect sense for the Switch, Mario Maker being an easy to pick up and play 2D Mario game that you can create your own levels for, and Mario 3D World having the perfect opportunity to use split Joy-Cons for a co-op play. Either of these would probably make the most sense. As far as third-party ports go, we've already seen leaks of Dragon Ball Fighters and Fortnite, so there might be a couple more beyond that. I doubt it'll be a huge part of the Direct, but stuff like that will probably show up along with a few other surprises. Additionally, to coincide with some of our other games we talked about, it's possible that with Prime 4 and Pikmin 4 coming out, they may port the Prime Trilogy or make some sort of Pikmin Trilogy just to hype up those games. It'd make a lot of sense, and they did the same thing with Bayonetta. I don't expect this to be Port City, just because they already have a lot of things to show off and a lot of big releases throughout the rest of the year. Third parties will probably be the majority of the ports that we see here, but I wouldn't expect too many first party. Moving on to DLC and our most notable one, Splatoon 2's Octo Expansion. I actually don't think that we're going to see too much of it at the actual Direct itself, because I think they'll probably want to save it for either the Splatoon 2 tournament or during the Treehouse Live event. I say this because it's a DLC, and I don't think they'll make too many new trailers for it. It would be kind of pointless. Maybe a small mention, but they would probably want to save bigger chunks of it for the part where everybody's watching Splatoon stuff, or as a general gameplay overview. Moving to Xenoblade 2, I think this is something that's very likely to show up at the actual Direct itself. We know that a new Fall expansion is coming out, and I could definitely see them wanting to promote it here. As a minor note on Kirby, I could actually see the final of the three DLC characters being revealed here, and possibly having some gameplay of them at the Treehouse, maybe even a release date of the pack. Additionally, you could add Amiibo support to just about every game I have talked about and will talk about in this video, so hopefully that'll be cool. The last thing with DLC that I would like to talk about would be the possibility of Mario Odyssey getting DLC. It's slowly been doling out minor costume changes along with the Luigi's Balloon Tour thing. So it's not unprecedented for the game to get DLC, but having a larger Meteor expansion might be on the horizon. It would certainly be a big announcement to show at E3, so that's a possibility, honestly. Now for unannounced games, the good stuff. They could just announce anything out of the blue, but there'd be no point in speculating about that. So I'm going to narrow it down to the two games that I feel are the most likely to show up here. The first of which is Animal Crossing. Now, I don't know anything about Animal Crossing, but I do know that it makes a lot of money. And they recently released the mobile game, which they've said would be there to promote their main games, so it makes sense that a new one is coming out eventually. Granted, there hasn't really been anything to hint at a new Animal Crossing, but honestly, at this point, I'm just fearing for the mental sanity of some Animal Crossing fans. You guys, you really like your, your life sims. And finally, we come to Retro Studios. I think this is guaranteed to be at E3. Their dev cycles have typically been three or four years, and this has been the longest drought between games that they've ever had. 
I don't expect it to be another 2D Donkey Kong game, because as I said, it's been such a long drought, I don't think that they would simply make a new game using the same assets as the last game and take this long to make it. I think what is very likely is that this is a new IP of theirs, because a long time ago Miyamoto had talked about how he puts a lot of trust in Retro, and how, how confident he is in them, so I could see it that they're focusing on a new thing that they're making themselves. Also, recently their hiring patterns have shown towards writers and general storytellers, one of which that we saw recently is specializing in non-linear storytelling and world building, so I really think this will be one of their key big game surprises to show off this year. Although I should note, Recently, as I was making all of this, the Star Fox Grand Prix or Star Fox Lilac System leak has come out, and I don't really want to say I fully believe it because nothing concrete has really shown of it, but the Reddit user who originally leaked it has had a decent amount of correct leaks, though he's also had quite a few that seem to be misinformed. And this would go well with the whole hiring pattern of writers, nonlinear storytelling, and all that, as Star Fox games generally go in that direction. So, I guess what I'm saying is, that seems pretty likely. Though the only thing that really confuses me is that this game would have a longer development cycle than Star Fox Zero, and might have even started before Star Fox Zero, which is just weird to me considering how this is apparently a spin-off title? I don't know. Regardless, it's Retro Studios, so I'm fine with them stepping up to bat with whatever kind of weird shaped bat they want. They've hit a lot of home runs, so you know what? Go for it. I'll, I'll see what you got. To end this, I'm going to give my own hypothetical on how I feel the Direct will go. This isn't 100% guaranteed or anything, this is just my own gut instinct, and you can switch a lot of this around, but this is my general overview on how I think it's gonna go. Let's assume that they start with Smash, like 2014, where they reveal a new character, talk a bit about it, but don't go into too much detail as they're going to save most of that for an inevitable Smash Bros. Direct down the line. They would then probably move into some smaller titles, maybe DLCs, maybe some ports, maybe a scissor reel of third party stuff, then probably go into something like Fire Emblem, a bigger title like that. Then again, after showing some of that, go into some smaller titles like Yoshi, DLCs, third parties, all that kind of stuff. Maybe a bit of a bigger third party announcement, maybe like something that you wouldn't see coming, maybe World Ends With You again. Then they would probably go into another bigger title, maybe Metroid Prime 4 trailer, let's go with that. A couple more smaller titles, maybe mention stuff like how Pokemon is coming out, and maybe maybe a little, little hint towards the 2018 game, or that Pokemon that was hinted at at the end of the Let's Go trailer. Then a couple other smaller things, and then finally end it with the retro game as the sort of big, ooh, look at our new shiny announcement. Then you think it's done, and then bam, they're gonna hit you with that smash, which is gonna probably end it no matter what. It'll probably be their more important character, maybe a third party, maybe someone else, maybe someone a bit bigger, if you know what I mean. And then they'll probably go directly into the Treehouse event, and that'll be the show. I think it'll be a pretty good event, even if all of the more radical positions don't really get filled, there's still a lot that they can show off here, and it's all pretty much confirmed to be pretty decent, I'd say, overall. E3 is always a fun time. You get excited, you get hyped, maybe you get a little disappointed, but that's what it's all about. That's the fun of it. And this is gonna be cool. <laughs>